in any industry, there's a massive array of terms and that often confuses people that are just unfamiliar with those terms. So when it comes to modifying the exhaust system, there's a set of terms that keep coming up. Some are regionally specific, others are fairly internationally accepted, but it's just helpful to understand what people are talking about in terms of exhaust upgrades and what the different components are. So hopefully you will know most of these, but there will be a few that you're not familiar with and it'd just be good to take these on board and just add that to your knowledge repository so that you can make informed decisions when it comes to upgrading your exhaust or even talking about exhaust upgrade with your mates and other people. So the first component in the exhaust takes the exhaust gases from the head of the engine into the exhaust. So that is generally referred to as the headers or the manifold of the exhaust. They're often cast, but there's various different constructions, different designs. They come out in different branches. You can have a four going down into a one, which is the most common on a lot of production cars. You can also have a four going into a two. And if you've got different engine configurations, you can have very complex exhaust systems that have been designed to allow you to extract the maximum amount of power. So the headers is probably one of the most critical areas of the exhaust when it comes to making power gains, because that directly directly affects the flow out of the engine. And the more efficient you can make that, the better the scavenging effect you can get from the exhaust system, the more chance you've got of making more power from your exhaust system. So next up in most exhausts, you've got some kind of catalytic converter. It's known as a CAT, a catalyst or a catalytic converter. And the job of this is primarily to just reduce the harmful emissions from the exhaust. I've done another video that goes into a lot more detail on catalysts and how they actually work within the exhaust system. But effectively, the catalyst is a bulge in the exhaust. It contains a honeycomb of magic stuff that affects the gases as it flows through that and reduces those harmful emissions. That's often the place where a lot of tuners will focus at improving the flow through the catalyst by removing it if it's legal to do so in your area or by replacing it with a higher flowing alternative. So we would talk about a deep cat or catless exhaust or just removing the cat where the catalyst itself is taken out of the exhaust system. So some people would just drop in a piece of pipe of the similar dimensions to the exhaust to replace the catalyst. Other people have used the catalyst shell itself and just stripped out all of the internal components of the cat. Some people fit a clamp system that gives them the option of swapping in the catalyst. For example, if they were doing track days and it's not legal to drive a car on the roads without a catalyst, that can afford an opportunity to swap between between the two setups. So you've got the maximum benefit on the track with no cat and you've got the maximum road benefit as well because the car remains legal. The problems you've got there is you often have to adjust the tuning within the car to make the most of the power differences that you will get having a cat or having a cat removed. Although it's fair to say most modern engines will trim the fuel accordingly and will adjust to the better flow of exhaust gases when the catalyst is actually removed. So then you've got the mid pipe or the back pipe. So that really connects this front front bit of the exhaust to the back bit of the exhaust. There's a few more little terms that we're going to discuss later on, but just for now, we'll just assume that that is a straightforward pipe taking those exhaust gases to the rear of the car, where you will generally have a muffler or a silencer. Some exhausts have a resonator chamber somewhere along that mid pipe, and then it goes to a silencer at the end. So the resonator controls the overall sound that it eliminates the harsh pitches from the exhaust. So by changing the size of that and the material used within it, you can adjust the harshness or the raspiness of the exhaust. The silencer's job really is to just muffle all of the sound so it's not picking out individual frequencies. I've done another video that goes into a lot more detail on the differences between mufflers and silencers. So if you just want to check out the subtle differences between that, check out that video. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video as well for you. So when people talk about the exhaust system, they'll often say something back like axle back, cat back or header back. So that's really just referring to the start point of the exhaust that you're talking about. So cat back is really everything after the catalyst. Axle back is really anything after the axle. So in most cars, that's just talking about the rear section of the exhaust and can be quite complex in some cars. They've got quite complex dual pipe systems and different silencers, maybe mounted longitudinally or transversely, just depending on how much space was available to the engine designer. So a lot of modern cars have a turbocharger as well, which is sighted in the exhaust. It's generally somewhere between the headers 
and the mid pipe section. So in some cars, it's pretty much the thing that bolts on immediately after the headers. In some cars, you may have the catalyst or even a DPF filter that the exhaust gases go through before it hits the turbo. But for maximum spool up, you really want that turbocharger to be the first thing that comes out of the head of the engine. So the manifold really should connect to the turbocharger. So people might also talk about a turbo back exhaust or the downpipe that takes the exhaust gases away from the turbocharger and connect it back into the overall exhaust system. So diesel cars generally have a DPF, a diesel particulate filter, which much like the catalyst is there to reduce emissions, but the DPF actually captures the soot carbon particles that are being burnt from within the engine because of the inefficient burn that's going on. Generally when the car warms up or when there's other issues within the engine and it's not running as clean as maybe it should, and it traps those particles and the idea of the DPF is it burns those particles off so it will produce harmless ash that can either flow out of the exhaust or it will eventually build up within the DPF filter and the DPF filter will require cleaning. So people may also talk about the DPFs and catalysts on those diesel engines. So hopefully that's given you an overview of all these terms of the exhaust. If I've missed any out, please let me know in the comments. If you've modified your exhaust system, I'd be curious to know which bits you've modified and whether you've noticed a significant difference in the power because that really helps me to improve my knowledge and I can put more of that knowledge into these videos for you guys so that you can learn more and more about getting the maximum performance from your car. Please boot the like button because that really does help us to get out there. I've lined this video up for you and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so because that really does help us to get out there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.